Okay, I promised to do this last year sometime. Um, towards the end of tomato harvest season, around September or so, and I never really got around to it. What this is, is a recipe uh, that lets us use uh, the green tomatoes, the ones that uh, you know just aren't going to ripen, but there's so many of them out there that you don't want to throw them away. Um, I found a recipe, I've kind of adapted it a little, a little bit uh, for our family's tastes here, that uh, uses pureed green tomatoes. And all you do is you take the tomatoes, um, this recipe actually calls for two cups of uh, pureed green tomatoes. Um, you take the tomatoes, uh, doesn't matter what size they are, you core them. So you just uh, you know cut a little, cut around the stem a little ways in, just so there's not that hard white part uh, still down into the tomato. And you toss them into a blender. That's it. Um, turn it on. Let it go till it's pureed. You leave the seeds in, you leave the skin on, um, all of that. So you're getting pretty good fiber uh, for the whole deal. You do that. Uh, what I did is I uh, measured it out. I put it in little Ziploc bags. You can see this one is from uh, actually from October of 2008. Um, I didn't really do too much with my green tomatoes this year. It was I just had so many red ones and so many green ones, um, and I still had bags and bags of this stuff from the year before. Um, doesn't really get freeze or burn if you make sure most of the air is squeezed out of it. I've uh, defrosted this in the microwave for a few minutes, and uh, now I've got uh, my two cups of uh, pureed tomatoes again. So uh, let's uh, take a look at what this takes and uh, follow along. Maybe I can uh, put the recipe up in a text format that you can pause and uh, see how it's made. And it's pretty easy. The kids love it. There are a lot of adaptations you can make to it. So uh, let's go. Okay, first things first, I've cracked three eggs, and you don't have to put them into a bowl. You can put them right uh, directly into your um, mixing bowl here if you want to. So I've cracked three eggs, and I've got one cup of vegetable or corn oil. doesn't matter, whatever your preference is. Actually, you could probably even use olive oil if you wanted to. I don't know if that would affect the flavor um, too horribly much. And... I've got uh, two cups of uh, just regular granulated sugar. I'm going to put that in there. Okay. And I'm going to mix that for, you know, probably two or three minutes until it gets nice and creamy. And uh, let's take a look at it after that. By the way, I'm mixing this on relatively low speed to start out with because if you don't, it's going to spray all over the place. I started it out at about two. On this mixer, it goes all the way up to 10. I'm gonna, now that it's uh, starting to get together here, I'm gonna kick it up to four. I'm gonna let it set there for just a little bit. Uh, like I said, probably one or two minutes, so it's nice and blended, nice and creamy. And then I'm gonna add the green tomato puree. And now what I'm going to do is, um, you probably do this gradually, a little bit at a time, but, uh, you know, I don't wait a lot when I cook this, and uh, actually just adding the whole thing of puree all at once, and uh, then turning the mixer on again uh, works pretty well. Okay, so we're going to put that back at a two. Get nice and stirred up there again. And then let it go for another minute or so. Okay, to this mix, I'm going to add one tablespoon of vanilla extract. There's one tablespoon of vanilla extract right there. I am going to add about a half a teaspoon of salt here. A giant pinch for the most part, uh, plus just a little tiny bit more. And now, what I'm going to start putting in, little by little, make sure this is off first is I have a bowl here with three cups of flour and one and a half teaspoons of baking powder. Now the original recipe did not call for baking powder and uh, the tomato bread was quite short. It was uh, very um, heavy. 
most of the time it cooked through okay. But uh, I found that it really doesn't um, take quite as long to cook with the baking powder in there. Plus, it's a lot airier and uh, there's less chance of it being doughy in the center. And by the way, um, this calls for a 350 oven for 45 to 60 minutes, depending on your oven. I actually do it at 360 in my oven. It's a GE Spectra oven, and it's, I don't know, it's never quite quite on uh, temperature-wise. And uh, you also need to work on uh, flouring, uh, greasing and flouring two bread pans. And uh, if you've never done that before, uh, basically all you do is you get some cooking spray, and you spray it in the pan, or you take a stick of butter and you rub it around on the bottom, or the side of the pan, or even just take it, you know, pour a little bit of oil in the bottom of the pan and um, rub it around with a paper towel. Uh, then take a couple of spoonfuls of flour, stick that in the bottom of the pan, shake it around, do this over a sink or a trash can or something, shake it around, make sure the edges get, a, get the flour on there, and uh, it should look like that when you're done. Uh, whether you use metal or, or glass. Okay. Let's go ahead and add the rest of the flour. Okay. Okay, that's the rest of the flour and baking powder mixture. And we're going to let that go just until it looks like it's blended well uh, so we don't see any lumps in there. That might take another minute or two. And uh, while that is going on, uh, this recipe, like I said, was fairly versatile. Um, next stage is you can put in a cup of walnuts that are chopped. You can put in a cup of raisins. Both of those are optional. You could just eat it the way it is, uh, plain. Uh, my family happens to like it with raisins, uh, with nuts. We also like it with um, chocolate chips. Those are optional. So I, I just have a partial bag of chocolate chips here um, that we've been baking with and snacking on. Got a little bit of that left. I've got a cup of nuts here, uh, of walnuts. You can also add pecans. You can add uh, lime zest. And actually, a lot of times when we add the chocolate chips, we add lime zest to also. It just makes it, it, it just makes it taste really great. So, um, at this point, that looks all mixed up. I'm going to add the walnuts. It's going to start getting a little clunky here. And I'm going to add the rest of the chocolate chips. Um, I probably added about a half a cup of chocolate chips. Normally, um, I will add the cup of raisins, I will add the cup of walnuts, and maybe a cup or a half a cup of chocolate chips. You don't want too many chocolate chips in there, just because it starts to, to make the bread a little runny. Um, you've got more chocolate sauce in there than actual dough. <laughs> okay. I've divided this up as evenly as possible between the two pans. Um, yep, spilled a little on the stove. That's okay. Um, again, sticking them in the oven now. Okay, there they are. Two complete loaves of, this time, um, tomato bread with chocolate chips and walnuts in it. Uh, sometimes it could be chocolate chips and raisins, um, chocolate chips and lime zest, pecans and raisins, pecans and walnuts, pecans and chocolate chips, whatever. Uh, it's a good way to get rid of your um, green tomatoes at the end of the season.